thanks for the warm introduction. Observing all protocols, let me say, I deem this a blessed opportunity to address my fellow Jamaicans. My quest into the field of special education started back in Jamaica when I taught at the School of Hope. I'm leaving out the extended name at this point in time because I think we have gone beyond that context. Today, I must say that we have come a far way when students with disabilities were not given the equal opportunity to gain the experiences needed to live their full potential. Today, I want to focus on a pathway that is non-negotiable for supporting students with special needs. And I want to say to you at this point in time, we cannot negotiate because this is just the right thing to do. Personally, I can see the only winner in this situation be, being the student with special needs. And of course, it's all about accessing the curriculum. Now, the landscape of education has changed drastically over the past two years. This drastic change required transformation. And when I talk about transformation in relation to teaching and learning practices, there must be some pedagogical pathways for supporting students with special needs. I want us to evaluate global trends as it relates to teaching students with special needs in virtual learning spaces. I want us to articulate the need for a team approach for supporting students in these virtual spaces. And I want to also develop or look at strategies that will highlight the need for developing supportive systems that will help students navigate the learning spaces. And of course, that will be strategies. And a final one I want to bring to you today is the issue of how do we navigate new and emerging technologies as it relates to special education needs within the learning spaces, virtual learning spaces, that is. Now, which one of these modes of transportation would you be able to use in an emergency? I want you to consider that. So pause. A, a truck, B, a car, or C. Now you're given the opportunity to choose. Which one would you choose? And of course, as you're looking around, I want to say to you, when you're looking around, your two options that you would have chosen are already gone. Now you're left with one that you're uncomfortable with. I want you to take in this question. Can you consider what you'd need to be assisted with in order to have access to this vehicle in an emergency? Can you imagine how you'd operate the system or manage the system? In addition to that, I want you to consider how would you move this vehicle along? Would you require any special attention, any special instructions? I ask these questions to position the thought that a learning need is connected to any barrier or barriers that will limit access to equal opportunities. In this case, you will not have access based on your inability to drive that vehicle. In our system, our education system that is, there are various barriers, especially in the online learning environment. I would say, many of you will say that the truck would have been the hardest. For me, it would have been. I'm using this exam to highlight or align our thoughts to the transition made by students to online. Many of these students, only form of learning took place in the face-to-face -face time or setting. And we asked them to make this shift. Of course, they would have found it challenging. Now, what is special education? The aim of special education is to accommodate learning engagement that will provide equal access to students with disabilities and varied learning styles. In 2018, Dr. Pinna, president of the Michael University College, stated that 30% of Jamaica's children had a special education need. The reality is that there might not have been increase, but we are doing more testing and hence we need to do more intervention work. Many students would have had to struggle without proper support to reach their goals. The reality is supporting students with special needs will require purposeful planning, monitoring of teaching procedures, and the provision of technology and other resources to ensure students are engaged. The reality is there should be no negotiation when we are providing for students with special needs. 
oftentimes students with special needs needing accommodation are provided with an individual education plan. The key thing to note is prior to COVID-19, most writers of these plans did not give attention to the digital world for learning. Hence, when COVID came, many of these plans were irrelevant or not workable within the online learning environment. I did this recording a few months ago, and I wanted to talk a little about it. The arrival of COVID-19 pandemic brought to attention the failure of educational institutions to address the holistic needs of students. According to the OCDC, during the COVID-19 pandemic, students from diverse backgrounds were more at risk of being at risk of what was happening as it relates to COVID. Many of these students were being affected by being displaced. In Jamaica, you know, we have the gang issues. Many students were isolated, emotionally scarred, and so on. And as we went through the situation, we realized that our special needs students were not given the attention needed. The reality is that our concept of schools across the world had changed, and we believed that a physical presence was necessary. And hence, when we had to make the shift, it was problematic for many students with learning needs. And of course, we saw the problems. We saw students saying, I can't be bothered with online, online again, log in, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. A lot of students were annoyed. But governments across the globe, they really tried. They really tried to support the vulnerable students that we have. But was there the system? That's a question I'd like to ask. Now, we seem to have a missing link when it comes on to special education needs, and we are considering some of the global issues. When I listen to the TVJ news and I listen to various broadcasts in Jamaica, and when I tune in, there seems to be a issue for me. It is clear for me that many times when we hear the adults talking, the education ministry talking, we have not given consideration to the student voice as it relates to online learning, especially the students who need to be accommodated because they have special needs. The reality is that in many cases, the student voice is not heard. And when we hear their voices, we continue to do the same thing. Let me also state at this point that one fundamental point or principle of any special needs program must be the inclusion of student voices. Get the rich narratives regarding their online experiences. And remember, you cannot take what America is doing and dump it in Jamaica's context. We have to use it as a way forward, collecting our data to ensure that we can plan to plan in such a way that it represents our context. Therefore, before moving forward, we must create a collaboration where students' voices are respected and heard and acted upon so we can help them to navigate the present crisis that we have in online learning as it relates to supporting students with special needs. You know, I would also like to say that when we consider online education, there are some thoughts that I had that I want to share. And the first one I want to share is goal setting. Yes, we must restructure our goals and objectives for the online learning environment. Since the lesson now is taking place in a digital space, educators will need to revisit goals and objectives and redesign their spaces to ensure that these issues are addressed. The goals that are implemented must be attainable and must consider the modality change taking place. In setting the goal, the educator must align goals with students' voices and, of course, the school routine. We want to ensure that they have a set routine. In setting your goals, allow students to visualize where they are. Use visual to guide students at various points during their online activities. Don't forget the need to focus students from the start. You know what? I think it's also important to ask differentiated questions when you start an activity. In setting that goal, the students should understand what they need to do, how they're going to get there, and how you're going to assess. Those are important things that you need to articulate and spend time to articulate so it becomes clear to them what needs to be done. 
Now, team collaboration is going to be important. If you are an individual teacher who is struggling to support your diverse learners in the online learning space, you should never, never be afraid to consult with a school psychologist, special education team member, or the school guidance counselor. I will touch on the team around the child or student shortly, because I think this is so important for us to understand. It is not a one person role, but rather a team effort for us to maximize what needs to be done to ensure that students are successful in the virtual world. Now relationships matter. And I say this because it's so important. Vygotsky suggests that learning is a social process. And so many times I see educators talking about what tools can I look use, what tools can I look on, but they have not really interrogate and see how the human connection is going to be applied. Therefore, as educators, we need to ensure that students with special needs develop a sense of belonging in your online class, what it is to have a sense of belonging where there's a connection to their online teacher. And of course, this would lead to academic engagement as well as social engagement. You may say, how can I develop this relationship? And I want to say to you, you can send video messages to your students. Generally, tell them that you are who you are, you're building that rapport. You can provide additional instruction to students using various modes. Not all students learn the same way. And you want to know, you want to know, and they want to know that you are interacting and you care for them. I would say post words of encouragement to your students and allow students to have access to you so they can leave personal messages so you can respond to them regarding their learning. Always be supportive. Once you build that relationship, that rapport, I'm telling you, it works. Structures and routine. When I talk to educators across the globe regarding students with special needs, and of course the digital space, the issue of structure and routine becomes a central part of our discussion. Remember, many of these students were socially conditioned and this kept them on track to do their task and so on. Therefore, in the online learning pathways that students will have, we need to understand that we must structure the process. And here are a few tips. Make sure that the routine that you're giving them is age appropriate for your students and get the support from parents if required. Get students familiar with the actual structure and routine that you're gonna ask them to be a part of. Always use visual clues to ensure that they are able to understand what you're asking them to do, always. And remember, be patient with them. Be patient, be flexible, and understand that sometimes they'll need more of your patience more than ever. Another factor that seemed to be coming into focus, and I know the conference will address this, is the need for parental involvement that will enhance students with special needs and their ability to maximize their full potential. I want to say that parents know their children the best. Therefore, teachers should use the valuable information available to help them. Have conversations with parents, pull out their child's preferences and use those preferences to help them in the online space. I would say that you should get the parents involved at all levels of their education. I will also consider having parents engage in family learning programs as a good way forward for learning. Now, I wanna talk a little about need for us to consider sensory and movement. Students with special needs may need additional sensory modification or support. I would say as you plan your online activities and your course, avoid having too many distractions. Distractions will create problems. It is therefore important that you check the IEP of the students in your class or observe your students to establish what is required to ensure they have access to the online content. You do not want to overstimulate these students. Now, when we talk about accessibility, 
we're talking about students being able to access what is on the learning exchange or in the learning exchange or the learning platform. For students with special needs, they must have the same education content, technology, access to technology that is, the same level of engagement as their peers. This means we will need to consider various accommodations that will address these issues they have proactively. For example, if a student has a visual impairment, it will be essential that all digital materials allow text to speech. For someone who has a hearing impairment, you'd caption those videos. The presentation of materials in the learning system must be accessible. So at some point, rather than having these extensive texts, you might want to chunk the material. Do not overload the students. It's important that you do not overload them with work. So you know what, sometimes how can a student be outstanding 10 pieces of assignment from one class? We have to think consciously. And if we go over two, you know, there needs to be some sort of intervention. In the example of the truck and the car and the bicycle, we examine that many times there's a need for orientation. And if we look in our online situation too, many students were pushed into these Google classrooms and learning spaces and had no clue of how to operate. For students with special needs, it is essential that they are orientated to the learning space. I personally have seen students not active for weeks in an online course. And when I ask them what's the problem, they say they do not know how to access or where to start. And these are adults in the Caribbean, all right? So what I'm saying, the need for orientation cannot be underscored, especially for students with special learning needs. Advocacy, everyone needs a champion. And I think it's important for us to understand the need to advocate for special needs students. Many of them do not have the voice to articulate. Their parents are in a similar position, might have had bad experiences at school. So therefore we need to ensure that we advocate for them. Advocacy is not from the teacher alone, but you can have community engagement. Find these groups that advocate for the child with special needs. Now, I'm pushing it on now because I'm wrapping it up. I want us to talk about possible tools, resources that we can use. I want to say for a student with dyslexia, Immersive Reader by Microsoft might be a way forward for improving comprehension and reading skills. It has been rated farewell. You can use voice to text for varied level of needs that students might have. I would say using Google collaboration tools or documents is a way forward. But what I also like is Alexa applications. With Alexa applications, you, the educator and parents can use your voice to interact with the technology that deepens learning and the understanding of various concepts. It can provide critical information and of course save time. With the app, students can track their events and so forth, and the teacher can also use it to prepare for upcoming lesson. Just imagine bringing an application such as this into the classroom where the special needs child or someone needing accommodation can interact with the tool to find information on the fly without looking in to a, a hard covered text. I have another one I wanted to share and let me see if this will allow me. I created this one. I pull it over to my desktop. It's not going over. I tend to like this one because it gives you that interactive sort of tool that you can use. And this is just a little thing I put together just to show you and demonstrate how this can be used. This is, of course, the Triangle Slave Trade, Atlantic Slave Trade, that is. And I've just put some little documentation here for you to see. It's called, it's called Thing Link. Here, I have a picture that I wanted to incorporate showing how they were captured and moved from one point in Africa to the next. And of course, you can put these links in. This is another one. If you wanted to put a YouTube video in, you could do that. And that could give a nice text. Here's another one that gives a picture of how slaves were transported on the boat and so forth. So what I'm saying, there are tools out there that you can use. You can add so many things to this. And I've used this quite a lot. Slavery in Jamaica tells a little about slavery 
in our country. So we have that there. So there are so many tools that you can use. And of course, I'd encourage you to try some of them from time to time. I started to tell you earlier about the collaborative approach. And I think it's so important. When we talk about collaboration, I'm asking you to think about James again. Just imagine the ministry announced the night before that all learning will take place online. As a result, Google Classroom would be your virtual classroom. In addition to this, there's an issue that you have and you know you have to support James and his parents. They do not have any mobile devices. And of course, James' parents are also unable to navigate the virtual world or setting. What are your initial thoughts? You can take a deep breath because it's indeed challenging. Therefore, I use this situation to highlight the point that the team around the student in the digital space is needed. You need teachers, of course. You need social workers. Just imagine, James did not have a special education plan. He was never tested. No doctor was involved in his health care. As a result, his developmental stages were not documented and he was not referred to any specialist. So we need these individuals, right? To be a part of the program. We also need someone to advocate because no one was there to advocate for James. I was there, but I was a young teacher, not knowing things. So therefore we need a psychologist, a social worker, the guidance counselor who are equipped with the skills needed and they can provide intervention for students with special needs. Some of these individuals can also meet the connection to the classroom. For example, the guidance counselor and the educational psychologist. Any modification must consider new technologies that will transform the digital space. For example, virtual reality and the metaverse. When we talk about the team approach, we're not thinking about the teacher who is by him or herself. We are asking everyone to work together to allow their skills to be put into this plan. And of course, this plan will be coordinated by a lead person. Therefore, one person would not have the full responsibility for supporting students with special needs because you need that support to be transferred also into the learning environment. Before I complete my presentation, I want to talk about learning management systems. It is important that any system that we use to manage learning and teaching, of course, must be accessible. It must be flexible, it must be easy to use. It should be able to personalize learning. We should be able to access data, inform our teaching, and of course, accommodate the learning needs. I wanna pause because I want Janet to take it over from here. Janet, over to you. Presenter. Over the past few months, I have been assisting Rohan in his quest for creating and sharing important information associated with teaching and learning. So, I am happy to be part of this session this morning. As a virtual presenter, I can be placed in a special breakout room to provide instruction. In addition, I can be programmed to respond to students and provide one-to-one -one oral instruction while Rohan is on his trip to Jamaica. By the way, did Rohan tell you he visited Reach Falls in Portland? Yes, he did and loves it. Let me also tell you another thing about Rohan. Rohan loves football and still remembers when your team devastated his Bethlehem team. Now let's get back on track. I want you to think about all the possible ways that I can be used to support students with special learning needs. The use of virtual presenters will become a mainstay in education. By the way, this is an excellent conference. Over to you, Rohan, and thanks for having me. Here is it, my virtual presenter. There are so many areas that this virtual presenter can cover can be a messenger for my class, can give instructions to students, can be placed anywhere within the context of an online course to ensure that students have a variety of presence within that space. Which brings me to another point, AI and special education. Artificial intelligence will help students with special needs reach their maximum potential. It will promote students learning and also provide personalized learning that has never been seen before in education. A few years ago, I did this video, and of course, quite a number of people have reached out liking the content. It talks about how education will be influenced by AI. You might want to check it out in this presentation too. 
And of course, we have reached the area of the metaverse. And I want to tell you that many have complained about Zoom, so we're moving beyond this point. So as I wrap up, I want to tell you that the interaction we have here will change in another two or three years. We will have virtual reality sessions with an avatar. We might not have the complex issues with technology. We'll just go into a space and all the software and the apps will be in that space and will help us to move seamlessly. Now, listen carefully to the definition of what a metaverse is. Hello, everyone. I am Janet, and I will be your virtual presenter. Let me say thanks to Rowan for inviting me to talk on the metaverse. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. I am sure you must have realized that a major social media company has rebranded itself. Since its rebranding, the word metaverse seems to be on the lips of everyone. But what is the metaverse? The concept of the metaverse seems to have come from an author named Neil Stevenson. Stevenson first used the term in a novel in 1992. The concept of a metaverse is that there is a realism of objects within a virtual environment. However, with the improvements in technology, the level of realism has improved to the extent that users can use a combination of technology to enable work, play, and social interaction within the virtual space. In summary, the future metaverse will be a 3D experience that will use augmented reality, AR, virtual reality. Yes. And going back to that slide, I don't want to play it a second time, so I will not. I want you to understand that the metaverse will change how we view teaching and learning. It will offer students the ability to go places that they have never been before in virtual reality. Therefore, a student who is unable to travel because of their disability will now be able to have a virtual reality experience. Students with special needs will also be able to learn and there is no need for additional risk. There will be also personalized learning, improvement in various skills and increased motivation. This is coming. So if we are truly to think about advancing our education system in Jamaica, as it relates to the digital learner in any environment, we must consider new and emerging technologies. My final thoughts, for us to build a world that is accessible to our students with special needs, there must be greater investments. There must be advocacy. There must be sharing of digital accessible resources. We need to partnership with organizations, international organizations. We will also need to enhance our teacher training at all levels. And we must ensure that students are given the opportunity to have assistive technology. And of course, there must be policy change. We cannot continue like this. Finally, there must be the coordination of services that will allow James to achieve his goals. I want to say thanks for allowing me to share. And of course, let me see also that I have provided a link to the PowerPoint feel free to be a part of my channel as I share content. And thanks for having me.